This is the 11th episode of a 30-part series giving an ecological overview of the insect orders. This episode will be looking at mantises in the order Mantodea, a remarkably fascinating and beautiful order, and the second in the series in which every single individual has a predatory nature. The first was dragonflies. Some mantises may be slightly omnivorous despite this, but like dragonflies, they both cannot effectively digest plant matter and thus are obligate to predation. A good sign that these insects are effective generalist predators is the lack of species they have compared to other insects. The order only has about 2,400 known species, which speaks to the specificity and specialization of their niche. This may sound counterintuitive, but predators and generalists tend to have less and less variation found within their DNA, and thus might be considered more specialized. It just depends on the context in which the term specialized is used. Both the name mantis and the order name mantodea come from the Greek word manto, meaning prophet or seer. Odea translates to resembles or looks like. Therefore, the mantis's name translates to looks like a prophet or seer, which is quite appropriate when looking at the regal, conniving appearance of these insects. The name is even more appropriate than you might think. These insects have some of the most superior vision in the insect kingdom. In addition to their three ocelli, which are simple light-sensing eyes, they also have two complex compound eyes that are unique among insects. This is because, like vertebrates, they have binocular, stereoscopic vision, meaning they can combine images from both eyes in order to form one picture with greater depth perception. To give yourself some context for what depth perception means, you can do a quick test. In each hand, hold one finger in front of yourself at two separate distances. Look at them with both eyes. Now, shut one eye and notice how even though you know which one is farther away, visually it's harder to tell which one it is because you are no longer using your stereoscopic depth perception. This is what depth perception is, and mantises are the only insects and maybe even the only invertebrates known to possess binocular stereopsis. Not to mention, they have a 300 degree field of view and can turn their head almost 180 degrees. They use these eyes for optimal prey capture. They're designed to give the ant mantis an enormous field of view, similar to a Google Earth camera, but they specifically improve their sight when their prey is in optimal striking range, that is right in front of them. Their vision is adapted to be wide but precise, and in some ways it's similar to our own but it is more advanced in its ability to sense depth perception as well as motion parallax. In testing, it was found to be more attuned to sensing depth perception through motion than the human participants, but less for static images, meaning that it can ignore camouflage and focus on specifically moving targets in order to capture prey. This is why when prey is not moving, the mantis bobs its head up and down to establish its own depth perception. In short, the vision is not quite as good as ours, but is refined from ours for the purpose of effective prey capture through precision strikes. And so even though it is superior among invertebrates, it's still very specific to the tasks the mantis performs. When it comes to the other senses, interestingly, the mantis has only one tympanal ear located on the underside of its abdomen, and thus cannot perceive distance with regard to sound. A single ear is useful to know if sound is happening rather than where it's coming from, which is helpful for certain scenarios, such as the echolocation coming from bats and other noise-producing predators. The mantis has enormous grasping forelimbs called raptorial legs. Many other insects have actually evolved similar legs, 
in a case of rampant convergent evolution in vastly different groups, with examples being ambush bugs, mantid flies, assassin bugs, giant water bugs, and even hanging flies. Although in hanging flies, it's the hind limbs rather than the forelimbs. What this means is that this strategy is likely the optimal one with regards to grasping and consuming prey. Indeed, all these insects consume their prey after getting a vice grip on them. The mantis's abdomen is elongated, and as it eats, you can watch it fill up in real time, like a mosquito with blood. They eat like this so they can store large kills and their nutrients for later, thus allowing them to eat the entire portion of a meal and not let their effort go to waste. An extremely energy efficient strategy. The size of the mantis is also an interesting factor. These insects come in many beautiful, vibrant, sometimes unbelievable colors and patterns. They usually do this to mimic common flower species or sticks and branches in order to cash in on unlucky pollinators and arboreal insects. The mantis also has lightning fast reflexes and can strike and grasp its prey in about 70 milliseconds. It can achieve this as its raptorial legs are actually spring loaded and build up potential energy, which they store through a latch mechanism. Once this latch releases, the legs shoot out at incredible speed, in a similar way to a chameleon's tongue, or a leafhopper's jump. Basically, mantises have optimized a generalist sit-and-wait predator niche early on in such a way that they can go after prey at larger and larger sizes. Indeed, some of these bugs even hunt small rodents and birds. With regards to habitat, because mantises rely on daytime and camouflage for their hunting prowess, they are typically found within environments of dense vegetation and abundant sunlight. They are surprisingly well adapted for urban environments because they require many optimal hiding places along with effective hunting locations. Mantises adore gardens and other serene, human-made environments for their abundance of prey and curated plant selection. Listed are some of the habitats that mantises enjoy. The mantis is preyed upon by many vertebrates and a few invertebrate specialists, especially wasps. To combat this, they often raise their raptorial limbs above themselves, spread their wings, which are usually brightly colored, and stand up straight to appear larger and more intimidating. Some even release a hissing sound by expelling air quickly from their abdomen. In addition, similarly to stick insects, mantises often rock back and forth, similar to a leaf, to better facilitate camouflage. Although this could also be just to increase their depth perception, as stated earlier. Mantises are popular symbols across various cultures due to their striking appearance, an intuitive genteel hunting strategy. In China, a martial art has been adapted from the posture of the mantis called Tang Lengguan, the style of Kung Fu, which is based on quick, precise strikes and deceptive stillness of the insect. Legend claims it was developed during the Ming Dynasty after a monk watched a mantis fight off a bird. Here it is in action. Wow. With regard to reproduction, mantises typically only live for about a year, and in colder climates they lay their eggs just before winter, as the adults all die off. Then spring comes around and the eggs will hatch beginning the next generation. Mantises belong to the insect infraorder Dictyoptera, which includes cockroaches as well. They are related to this group because they have a short ovipositor and lay an uetheca, which is something of a protective disjointed 
reproduction strategy, almost like a stationary incubator. Cockroaches lay an entire egg case, but mantises instead lay a foamy substance which hardens and then builds their uotheca from scratch. They will then lay their eggs inside it, thus starting the next generation. This disjointed reproduction is important as mantises are not social animals in the slightest. They often eat their mates after fertilization, and they would happily eat their own young, and often do. You may ask yourself, why does the mantis often eat her suitors? Well, it may sound brutal, but in doing so, she is helping the next generation. She is both keeping herself well fed along with giving essential nutrients to her offspring. A female will often only mate once per clutch of eggs, and so males are of no use to her for quite some time after the fact. There is much nuance and romance with regards to Mantis' mating strategy, or lack thereof, and I would not do it justice explaining in just this video. But overall, I will say that the sexual cannibalism is beneficial to the females in this order in several fun and interesting ways. So, why are mantises among the largest insects that are also dedicated apex predators? Clearly, their strategy has proven successful despite their similarity to many other insects. So what is it that they do differently and uniquely from other insects? to have dominated this niche. Well, here's a list of things that have likely synergized to help them become what they are today. Number one, these insects evolved from cockroaches, but adapted the generalist feeding strategy into a generalist predation strategy. Other insects would have needed to evolve away from being more specialized in diet, but the head start mantises had helped them because they've had more time to adapt and refine the niche that many other insects occupy. Number two, their previously mentioned superior vision is a unique trait to only them and requires high metabolic cost to maintain. This means that they need high quality food sources their entire life to sustain better vision and so have adapted to a risky lifestyle to dominate the niche by eliminating the risk through extremely accurate and consistent prey capture. Number three, their elongated colorful bodies and incomplete metamorphosis allow them to be camouflaged and killing from day one. Other insects might have had to go through a larval stage or evolve away from a typical flat or roundish body plan. Number four, lastly, mantises possess tegmina insects with complete metamorphosis don't really have. They can possess flight but still remain well camouflaged. Beetles possess similar elytra, but the body plan and larval stage of the beetle means it's less conducive to evolving a sit and wait predatory strategy, in which mobility is sacrificed for effective grasping of prey. Indeed, many predatory insects prefer a rush down hunting strategy, especially among more streamlined less stick-like insects, such as tiger beetles, dragonflies, or tarantula hawks. All these insects ambush by chasing the prey down as opposed to sitting and waiting. It seems that raptorial forelegs are more optimal for this sit and wait strategy, even with hanging flies, who simply hang from a branch as they wait for something to fly by which they can grasp and then consume. Overall, I would chalk up mantises to maximizing both prey capture and energy efficiency in order to maintain their status as the largest terrestrial ambush insect hunters. Let's just take a moment to appreciate the beauty of this order.
thanks for watching this episode of Privileged Bug Facts. Stay tuned for more bug content. Thanks.